Today we're going to talk about position versus time graphs, which is a way that you can represent an object's motion. The topics we're going to cover include properties of a position versus time graph, velocity on a position versus time graph, objects at rest, positive and negative velocity, constant velocity, changing velocity, how to calculate velocity, and displacement and position. It's a lot more topics than usual, so if you need a break in the middle, feel free to pause the video and come back to it. We're going to start with this scenario. Fred is going to drive. He starts at his house. He drives past school to the store. He speeds up, reaches a constant speed, and slows down to stop at the market. The drive takes him four minutes. He buys a wrap for lunch. He spends 10 minutes at the store. He drives back to school. It takes him two minutes to get back to school. We will define the school as a position of zero, x equals zero. So the school position, x equals zero. His house is going to be at negative one kilometer, and the market is going to be at 0.4 kilometers. To help you visualize it, here's an animation. There he is going to the market. He's stopped. He's going to get his wrap. He's there for 10 minutes. And then he goes back to the school. This is a position versus time graph that describes his motion. Let's talk about some properties of a position versus time graph. First, on a position versus time axis, the x-axis along here is always going to have time on it. And the units could be minutes, seconds, and hours, but it's always time. And that comes from the, the title of the graph, position versus time. What comes first, position, is what goes on the y-axis. And after the versus is what goes on the x-axis. So time has to be on the x-axis. On the y-axis, we have to have position. Position can be in kilometers, meters, centimeters, miles. Any measurement of position will work. It depends on the scenario that we're looking at. If you look at the y value on a position versus time graph, you could find the position of an object at any time t. So you can use this graph to find Fred's position at any time. Can you match this graph to Fred's motion? So pause the video and look at the graph and look at the y values throughout the graph and see if you can figure out where he is at different times. So pause the video and see what you can come up with. So at the start, Fred is at negative one kilometers. That's at his house. He crosses the school. It looks like it's just after two minutes. So he's at x equals zero meters. He reaches the store. That's at 0.4 kilometers after four minutes. Then he stays at the, at the um, store for 10 minutes. So he's there until 14 minutes. Then he's going to return back to the school, and he arrives there after two more minutes, so he gets there at 16 minutes. We can get the distance he's traveled using the position versus time graph. To find the distance, we're going to add up all the distances traveled by an object. So let's do an example. What is the distance traveled by Fred from 0 to 5 minutes? So we start at 0, and we're going up to 5. So we need to add any distance he's traveled along the way. So we'll break it into sections. We'll look at this section up until zero. So from zero to about 2.2 minutes, he travels from negative one kilometer to zero kilometers. So that's a distance of one kilometer. Then from this time until five minutes, he goes from zero, position of zero, to a position of 0.4. So that's a distance of 0.4. So he went 1 kilometer plus 0.4 kilometers. His total distance is 1.4 kilometers. What is Fred's total distance from 0 minutes until 20 minutes? So I'm going to have you pause the video and solve. But to give you a start, we've already figured out the distance up to 5 minutes. We said he went 1.4 kilometers up until then. So you just need to figure out how far he went for this part of the the um, activity. So the distance he traveled was 1.8 kilometers. We have our 1 kilometer here, our 0.4 kilometers here. Then he stayed at the store, so he didn't go anywhere. He went back to school, which is another 0.4 kilometers. So it's 1.4 plus 0.4. We get 
1.8 kilometers for his total distance. We can also find displacement from a, a position versus time graph. To do that, we just need to find the initial position and the final position. Remember, the path doesn't matter for displacement. And then we use the calculation for the equation for displacement, which is final position minus initial position. So for an example, the displacement of Fred from zero minutes until five minutes. To do it, all we need to do is find his final position and his initial position. His initial position is negative one kilometer. His final position is 0.4 kilometers, which is right here. Uh, his displacement is his final position, 0.4, minus his initial position, so minus negative 1. And if we subtract a negative, it's the same as adding. So we get 1.4 kilometers is his displacement. So from 0 to 5 minutes, his displacement and distance were the same. They're not always the same. It's only because he was going in a straight line in one direction. So see if you can find Fred's total displacement from zero minutes to 20 minutes. So remember, the path doesn't matter. You just need to find his initial position at time zero and his final position at time 20, and then find displacement from that. So pause the video to find it. His displacement from zero minutes to 20 minutes is one kilometer. The way we find it is his initial position is negative one kilometer. His final position is at x equals zero kilometers. And then we do our displacement, final minus initial. So zero minus negative one. And when we subtract a negative, it's the same as adding. Gives us one kilometer. So his distance from zero to 20, which was 1.8 kilometers, is not equal to his displacement. So they're not always the same. But his displacement from the beginning until the end, he has only changed position by one kilometer. We can also find velocity from a position versus time graph. So you notice that Fred has different motion throughout. We, if we want to find velocity, we have to look at one particular point because his velocity is not the same the whole time. So we're looking at the instantaneous velocity, velocity at that instant of an object on this graph. It's going to be the slope of the graph at that moment in time. So to find the instantaneous velocity, the basic idea is that velocity is the change in position per unit time. And for those of you who have taken calculus, that's going to be dx dt. Delta x over delta t is going to be equivalent in calculus to dx dt. If you haven't taken calculus, don't worry about it. For any point on the graph, the way we find the velocity is we pick a point on the graph, we draw a line that's tangent to that point, and then we find the slope of that tangent, and the slope of the tangent will give us the velocity. So let's do just some practice finding tangents. So I have three points, A, B, and C. I want you to draw tangents to those points. Now a tangent line passes through the point, but it doesn't go across the line. So I wouldn't draw a tangent like this for C. It's gonna be along the line like this, that's a tangent. So I want you to pause the video and trace tangent lines for each point with your finger. All right, here's our tangent lines. For A, it's right along the graph. For B, it's a horizontal line along the graph. And for C, it's a negative slope line along the graph. And the slope, if I found the slope of any of these tangents, it would give me the instantaneous velocity at the points where the tangents are. So let's do an example. We're going to find the velocity at a point on the position versus time graph. So first, we're going to draw a tangent at that point. We're going to choose two points on the tangent, x1, y1, and x2, y2. And then we're going to use the slope equation from math, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, and that will give us the velocity at that point. So I want you to find Fred's velocity at time 15 minutes. So we can go to the graph, here's 15 minutes. We go up here. This is the point that you wanna find the velocity. So this is your point, so you're gonna draw your tangent, which we've done like this. Pick two points on the line. I picked this point and this point. You could also pick the middle point. Your two points, you're gonna use your slope equation and um, use that to find the velocity. Make sure your first point comes 
first in the graph. So this is your first point and this will be your second point. Um, so go ahead and pause the video and find the velocity at 15 minutes. All right, so I picked these two points. My first point is at 14 and 0.4 kilometers. My second point is at 16 and zero kilometers. And then the slope is y2, which is zero, minus y1, which is 0.4, over y2, x2, which is 16, minus x1, which is 14. So zero minus 0.4 over 16 minus 14, and I get negative two. And I left my units in it, kilometers on top of minutes. So that's the answer you should get. So does this it, does it make sense that this velocity at this point in the motion is negative? The answer is it makes sense because at 15 minutes, it's when he's traveling backwards towards the, the school. So he's going in the negative direction. So she should have a negative velocity. Do the units make sense for velocity? So I just left the units. I didn't, there's nothing that you can cancel. Um, Units for velocity should be something like miles per hour, meters per second, um, kilometers per hour. In this case, it's kilometers per minute, but they make sense because it's distance over time, which are the correct uh, ratio of units for velocity. All right, now we're gonna look at objects at rest on a position time graph. So an object at rest stays in the same position. It has the same Y value on a, Position versus time graph, that's a place where the slope is zero. The slope is zero when it is a horizontal line, and that's when the velocity is zero. So where is Fred at rest? Pause the video and find any place where he's at rest. All right, there are three places where Fred is at rest. Two of them are very obvious. One is, is hidden, so if you didn't get it, that's okay. We're just gonna kind of keep practicing these so you can see it. So the first one that's hidden is right here when he first leaves his house. And it's not very clear that it's at rest, but if you took that point and you drew a tangent right there, you would have a horizontal line. So instantaneously he is at rest. He doesn't stay at rest, but he is at rest at the very beginning. So at the beginning, he's also at rest when he goes to the market from four minutes until 14 minutes horizontal line, no velocity. He's also at rest after he returns to school from 16 minutes until 20 minutes. All right, now we're gonna look at positive and negative velocities. So a positive, for an object that's not at rest, you can have a positive slope or a negative slope. So positive means it's going like this, and a negative slope means it's going like this. Same as what we do in math class. Positive slope means the object has a positive velocity or is moving in the positive direction. So where is Fred moving with a positive velocity? So we're looking for a positive slope. Pause the video and see if you can find where he has a positive velocity. Fred has a positive velocity from the beginning after he starts moving until he comes to a rest at four minutes. So his velocity does change. It's a curve, which means the slope is changing, but it's always got that positive slope. Some slopes a little bit less than others, but overall he's moving forward. And this is the time when he's going from his house to the market. He's going in the positive direction. We can also have a negative velocity. So a negative slope means the object has a negative velocity or is moving in the negative direction. So that would be a slope that looks like this. It's going in the negative direction. Where are the places where Fred is moving with a negative velocity? Pause the video and come up with an answer. Fred is moving in the negative direction from 14 minutes until 16 minutes. This is when he's driving from the market back to the school. Negative slope, negative velocity. Since he's going in the negative direction, he has a negative velocity. The other thing that can happen on a position time graph is you can change direction. So Fred can go forward and then change, turn around and go backwards. When an object's velocity changes from positive to negative, it is changing direction. Side note, it can also be going from negative to positive. In our original scenario, 
Fred was going in the positive direction, then he stopped, and then he had a went in the negative direction. So he changed direction, but he had a big stop in the middle. What do you think the graph would look like if he never stopped at the market? He got to the market and immediately turned around and went back to school. Pause the video and sketch out your prediction. All right, this is our original graph where he is stopped and turning around. And this is an example where he immediately turns around. He goes up and at four minutes, he reaches the market, immediately goes back to school. And what you'll notice is it has a peak and that's a clear transition between a positive velocity and a negative velocity. And that is where he's changing direction. We could also have had a dip so or a trough where he comes down negative and then changes and switches to positive. That would be another example of changing direction. We could also have constant velocity on a position versus time graph. When an object has a constant velocity, it has a constant slope. The position changes with time at the same rate. That means a straight line. So on a graph, this looks like a straight line. It could be a constant positive velocity. So this would be a positive slope, but a straight line. We could have a constant negative velocity, negative slope, and a straight line. Or what we've talked about when it's at rest, it's constant zero velocity. It's not moving, but it's not a changing velocity. So that would be a horizontal line. So straight line up is positive velocity, down is negative, and horizontal is at rest. So are there sections of the graph where Fred has a constant velocity? Any of these three types? Pause the video and see what you can come up with. So Fred has a constant velocity when he's going towards the market. He was uh, he was traveling for a while and his even though there's a curve here, it straightens out for a while and then there's a curve at the end. So this section is a constant positive velocity. When he's stopped at the store, that's a constant zero velocity. When he returns to the school, he has a constant negative velocity. And when he's stopped at the school, he has a constant zero velocity. So we can have at rest, constant velocity. We can also speed up and slow down. So when a position versus time graph has a curve on it, when it's curved, the object is speeding up or slowing down. So when the slope is becoming more steep, that's more vertical, the object is speeding up. And when the slope is becoming less steep or more horizontal, the object is slowing down. See if you can find on the graph places where Fred is speeding up or slowing down. Pause the video and see what you come up with. Graph, there is a curve and it is the slope is becoming steeper and steeper and steeper. It went from at rest at zero and is reaching a greater velocity. So this is when Fred is speeding up as he leaves the house. When then it has a constant velocity and now we see a curve where it is getting less steep and it's approaching a horizontal line or approaching zero. That's when he is reaching the end of the trip and he's slowing down to a stop. So this part is speeding up and this part is slowing down. All right, and here is all the information that we went over. I'm not gonna read through all of it, but if you wanna pause and make sure you wrote down anything you need, go ahead. And that is all we have for today.